Coming up in this week's show, Geo's are going to find out why we should all be using magnetic work holding. Eyewitness, a monster cut at JKP Engineering, uh, not to be missed this one. Uh, we're also going to show you why you should be using machine monitoring software to get the very best out of your machine shop. But first of all, Paul's got a rather tasty special offer to show us, and it's not offered. You see machines of this size and capability, not only on special offer, but available immediately. Right, let's get to it. Great to be opening the show this week with a special offer from DTS UK. Now I'm gonna get through as much as I can in the next minute uh, or so to whet your appetite as to why you should contact them about this machine. The Coria Norma MG, a new machine to uh, well, to Coria's portfolio and available from DTS in the UK. This machine is available from stock. Now you've got a, a very, very versatile machine tool here. You can see the table indexing here, but you can turn on this machine. You can obviously uh, index that head. You can get to 324 million different positions uh, and it's got 22,000 kilograms of clamping force to make sure that when you do get into a position, you can repeat to that position as well. It's patented technology from Coria. Uh, a very versatile machine that comes equipped with a 40 station tool changer. It's an ISO 50. Um, the actual machine itself has a Heidenhain TNC 640 control on it. All of that plus more uh, is available from stock. Now, I know it's a machine that won't be suitable for everybody. You do need to be um, a heavy duty machining business, someone looking at those more difficult applications, those larger components. Um, but if you are in that market, then the Norma MG is coming available from stock. Uh, you need to contact DTS at dtsuk.co.uk. You know what, we'd be really interested to hear from yourselves watching about this style of machine and how many companies that are watching the show um, that have applications that would be suited to this type of machine. Please, please uh, comment on the box, uh, the comments box below about this. Mm. Paul. Yeah, the, one of the interesting things about this machine is you can get eight tons on the table, which mm -hmm. I didn't mention in that, in that video. Uh, and also a little bit more detail about the patented head technology. Now this UAD head uh, can get to, as I said in the video, 324 million positions, and it's got 22,000 kilograms of clamping force. Now what does that really mean to the user? Well, really, the key here is that in mo on most machines when you're tilting your head, you find a position, uh, it fixes, you may be doing a drilling operation, a boring operation, whatever it might be. When you go away, if you try to come back to, to that exact position, mm. most machines, it will be out. It's very difficult to achieve that repeatability. But where with the, the UAD head, they can reposition in exactly the same place and it will cut the same cut, the same bore, the same diameter, which really is pretty unheard of within industry. And I would imagine these type of machines, you, you know, they are made for the customers, so I'm surprised one's available, is it, because it is a bed mill, isn't it? It, it is, yeah. and you're normally looking at about a year to, to, yeah. to order one of these yeah, machines and get, it, uh, and get it installed, could be yeah. a year, but this, as I said, just uh, into March. Straight all the way back from the show, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. just bring right, it in Before we move on, I want to know how are you guys? Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Well, yeah, fun. we're flying about a bit, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah yes, mm -hmm. uh, been to DMG Mori, uh, yeah. the open house there as Fronten. well, Fronton, which was superb. Yeah. Lots of technology there. Considering yeah. the fact that you don't like flying, you've been to Dubai earlier on in the year. It's not the flying; and it's the company I go with. Uh, he went okay. with me this time, but, but I got some lo lovely video no. coming up uh, at some point in yeah. skiing. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, let's move on from there. Okay, next up, magnetic work holding. Geo's in technical corner with bison, and that's not bison breath, it's bison work holding. I mean, who writes this script, really? Well, is it you? <laughs> in this technical corner, I'm joined by Nellis from the SAV Group. Now, you've recently started working with bison. Now, some of the products that Bison can now offer the UK market are significant, but today we're going to concentrate on the magnetic product range and why people in the UK should start embracing magnetic technology. Tell me why, Nellis. <laughs> Thank you, Gio. Well, basically on the table, you see different examples of standard products that we have in our program. They're all manually operated. Uh, all to the left, you see products that are used in on grinding machines or on EDM machines. R fine pole pitches, general purpose basically. Next in the middle you see an example of a chuck 
that is used in milling and a chuck that is used on rotary uh, vertical lathes. Basically these two are also produced in larger sizes. So for instance for this one we go up to four meters chucks wow. even. So we make all kinds of specialty uh, uh, solutions for specific uh, applications. You also do permanent electric magnetic chucks up yes. to that size. Yes. Now, it's a very short technical corner, for, but from a technical perspective, why should people embrace magnetic technology? What are the main advantages of using magnetics? Yes. First of all, it's setup time. You save a lot of setup time by using magne mag magnets. Secondly, the clamping on a magnet is all over the surface. So you distort the product as little as possible. You have high accuracy because of it. And you reduce vibrations because you have a very easy, e evenly uh, distributed holding force. Now, Liz, I'm going to have to stop you there, but thank you very much. To find out more about all of the magnetic technology that is now available from Bison, watch the full technical corners coming soon on MTD CNC. You are so mean to Geo, you are. You really oh, are. He's the one that said he got bison breath. I do. I do. Really? Well, I mean, he's standing a little bit further away and also looks like he's standing on something because <laughs> it seems a bit taller. <laughs> I, I think right. with it, it's really interesting magnetic work holding it. And I was trying to look at the, they talk about the advantages, but I was trying to look at the disadvantages as well mm -hmm. and why people would, uh, you know, steer away from this solution. Mm. And, and, I, and I was thinking things like, it, it's almost like when you're clamping with a set of clamps, you can actually see it and feel the, the clamp the and see it being held. Where yeah. you, when you do something with a magnetic chuck, it's a bit trust. It, it, yeah, there's a, a bit there's of trust a, there. It, exactly, but, but it's consistent. That's... It's consistent grip. That's I'm not a... taking anything away from the capabilities of it. I think I'm looking at the fact that how some people view it, they mm. might look at it and think, "Oh, do I trust Lots that? Of Hasn't control. got the clamping force?" But clearly, it has. And the, mm. the only other thing was, I'd be interested to know more about costs and how they compare to normal traditional and methods quite a, of clamping. Quite wide range, to be fair, as well, isn't there? There's quite a number of solutions they've got. I, I think it's ideal. Listen, I've used one and I know how effective they are. That clamping force is is phenomenal. The security is there, the accuracy, everything that um, Geo has talked about there. But yeah, so I was just trying to look at both sides of the argument. Uh, what you wouldn't want to be is you couldn't use them with your braces, could you? Did you use those at Rolls Royce when you used to actually you know, get rid of parts on a regular basis? <laughs> no, and I'll tell you someone else who couldn't use them, Barry Sheen, he wouldn't be able to use them. <laughs> he's not alive now. Is he not? No, no he's not. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> moving on. Um, I do want to ask you, um, there's a couple of negatives and things that people might consider in. If it's magnetic, are you going to have a problem with chips and swarf attaching? These are all, I mean, I'd be interested to know if people are using this sort of technology, yeah. um, what experience they've got with it, because I think this is a great addition for Bison. And I think you'll see a lot more of them in the market, you know, because they're so broad, grinding, uh, as he mm. said, as well as milling and yeah. um, you know, turning. Perfect. So, you know, as Paul just said, are you using magnetic work holding? And if so, please tell us the pros and the cons, because we would love to hear from you. And maybe even we could do another video on that. Um, anyway, next up, there's that monster cut that I found out at JKP. Tom Scabala, Scooby that you're mainly known as. Yeah. It is a pleasure to meet you, one of our biggest fans for Sorf and Chips. Where did you find out about it? I have no idea. You just came up on Facebook and then that was it. I watched one video and now I think I've watched them all. <laughs> even the ones you'd done before I even started watching, I've watched them back. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And we love, love to hear from you and actually to finally meet you. What do you enjoy about the show? Oh, everything. Just the information you give. You can't find it anywhere else. and. I'd love to jet off to all these fancy places and go to all these shows. I'm trying to get a few tour reps to take us. That's fine. We'll, we'll try and get, you know, we'll try and get everyone out there in the marketplace. Um, Tom, you're huge on Instagram, on uh, LinkedIn, and you, let, let's talk about this video. Let, talk me through what's happening here. So this is a, this was sort of a trial we did of a Dorma face mill where we tried to push it past the recommended speeds and feeds and a bit bigger cut because I think the recommended cut's about 8 mil and this is taking 12 right. and it's going a lot harder than it should be and this was filmed on our VMX 42 Ti on our Herco which is an absolute weapon 
And what's the material? It's P20 tall steel, so it's not soft. No. And it did it with ease. Oh. It only rocked about 40% spindle pressure. Wow. And as you can see, we actually have a video. Uh, the chips come off quite nice, and it's... Nothing's burning, nothing's broken. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> and it, it, it did it with ease. So it's allowed us to push our cycle times down. Because we can just do jobs a lot quicker now. Are you happy with your Herco machines? All of it. And was there a before and after? Uh, we, not really. It was just a... <laughs> Have a go, hope it works. <laughs> and a fingers crossed. Thank fingers you so crossed. much, Scooby. That's no worries. Thank you. Scooby was just so lovely. And Rob Hewitt, we, we, his name is Tom Scabala, um, and he's probably watching this now, but everyone calls him Scooby. That's his name. But he was brilliant. Why didn't you take your iron with you? I know. There was, um, that was actually one of their you freebies that? that they got that's from they ages ago. Like. When you get your goodie bag, that's what they're like. I've never had one. <laughs> they're funny though. They? <laughs> you go. But, but before you get into this, I, I tell you what, these, these are a fantastic job shops. We, they've got a, a great range of different machines, cater for lots of different sectors, mm. aerospace, oil and gas. You know, I've learned a lot from this guy on oh, Instagram. Because what he actually posts there, I'm thinking, wow, you know, that that is really educational. He, he pushes yeah. his machines to the to the limits, as mm. you saw there with a with a P20 cut. I mean, even to the point where one of the comments on the screen there <laughs> um, from uh, Mr. Mr. Crollop's comment: "This is the kind of cut you do on someone else's Elf's machine." machine yeah. 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 Clearly, yeah. Uh, Scabula doesn't own that machine. His boss Andy does, as we <laughs> yeah. met. But, but I'm sure he's more than happy for him to test it because yeah. the faster you cut, the harder you cut, the quicker you get the parts off, mm. and the the more profit you make. The last time I saw that was when we were at Romy and we were talking about, we saw them ramping um, yeah. and that was amazing. You just saw the swarf mm. coming off and yeah. you just think, wow. He's coming impressive. in anyway, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in a few weeks, uh, Scooby and Rob are going to be doing a swarf and chips. It's going to be like a machinist's takeover of the show. So it will be a really, really good show. And also, you know, if you cut bigger or very similar to what you're seeing we would love to hear from you film it send it into us um get in touch with us uh, send us an upload or a link or something like that and we'll review it on our sh our show we'd love the more metal cutting videos that we can get the better all right so next up another one it's actually from me again sorry uh, this time it's all about machine monitoring within your machine shop it's fascinating take a watch We've travelled to Headline Filters in Kent and the first thing we noticed when we walked around the machine shop are all the screens everywhere and it's a planner basically for the whole running of the machine shop and Gary you're a big advocate for these, um, how's it worked for you as a machinist? Oh, it's been great, I mean it's, it just keeps track of everything, all the time the machine stops or it's running, whatever it's doing it's all listed there so yeah it does help, I mean can't fault it, any time it stops, the options are there, just select the option why it's stopped and uh, it, everything's notified and every week management get a full record of it so they can see why it's been down, see why tools have been wearing faster and it just gives us that opportunity to try and improve things because as it keeps a track of tool wear as well, can't fault and, it. And that could kind of go into a costing for it future work. The costings and planning obviously, obviously if we're running a batch of a thousand that gives you the whole time over that thousand so including downtime so they can also price that in so we yeah, it's, just, it's, it's been great. I mean, it's helped us improve things. Uh, what about tool life? Yeah, increased tool life as well, because obviously if it tool keeps going down all the time, there's a reason for it, and it lets us know, so we can improve that as well. So, yeah, we're looking at different tooling, different grades of tips, and yeah. A perfect example of a company investing into the technology, collecting that data, but doing something really, really solid with it too. Gary was brilliant. He loves MTD, loves Swarf. Um, I love, there's a video that he did. He's got a smartwatch and when, sometimes he'll get a notification and if he's interested in the video, he says, oh, I'll just go take a little break and watch the well, video. So when we upload something, it, it tags his phone. And yeah. then he, oh, not, yeah. not, not Paul's videos, I want to thought. <laughs> a bit dull, you know. Um, <laughs> gents, if you owned a machine shop, would you have a machine shop monitoring system? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, as I say, if you, if you can be visual, based on what you're doing, 
No different to lights out uh, engineering, is it? Where, mm. where you know you've, you've gone to bed and a machine maybe have gone down or something. You you get buzzed by your your iPhone or whatever mm. you got. It, it's the same thing. It, it's just in, it's it's like in process, isn't it? Sometimes when you're looking at buying a machine that's capable of improving, you want more efficiency, so you want the spindle to be running for longer. Why would you not then try and um, invest in maybe software to make sure you are getting the best out of it? Clearly, as this does, you know, he knows when the machine stopped. He knows what issues he's having with toolware. Yeah. But my, my next point is where does this go on from here? And I think what's next is when this actually alters the capabilities of the machine. You almost get into the artificial intelligence area mm. yeah. where this actually then says to the machine, well, actually, you know, we need to cut slower. We need to cut faster. And it offsets, does all that within, within its within own, the within machine. the machine inside. I think the main point as well that he brought across was the, the fact that when he's doing costings or anything like that, they've got yeah. that, that, you know, that part's going to make that. So that helps admin as yeah. well. So the whole company is really, it's not just a machine shop monitoring software. It's for everything, everybody. It just shows you how far things have come as well because, and again, I often talk about when I was a machinist, there was never anything like this. So you weren't accountable. Yeah. And, I, and I don't mean it to sound <laughs> like the machinist needs to be accountable, but you never really knew, you know, if you wanted to stop the machine for 20 minutes and go and get a cup of tea, you could. And, mm. you know, you had a card where you had to 10 hours to do the job and you just tried to do it within there. If you went over it, you weren't really scrutinised. But yeah. looking back, if I look at that situation, if we'd have had these sort of systems, mm. You, yeah. you'd, have, you'd have been incentivised to. You've got to keep. You've got to keep yeah. the, the jobs and going through the management. Shop. Management Mon yeah. would have you'd been really about grateful. The tools, so for, for, mm. yeah, it's, it's really. Do you remember good. that utopia from from a rower? Oh yeah, ma maximising the efficiency of your machine tool. And how many hours can you get from your spindle in a year? Eight thousand seven hundred and sixty. So that type of software helps you. Uh, yeah, get and, and if you're not getting close to that, you'll know it'll tell you. Mm, definitely, mm. Ooh, under pressure. All right, let us know if you use this type of software. Um, it would be really good from uh, to hear from you on, on on all of that, the pros and the cons as well. Don't forget, if you've got a big cut that you want to show off as well from the last video, send those in as well. That's the end of this week's Wharf and Chips. Gents. We're done. This has been great. We're done for another week. You guys are probably flying off somewhere else. I don't know. Well, we are actually. Yeah, 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 you actually are. But anyway, thank you for watching the show. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. The more we hear from you, if you want to share the show as well, we really do appreciate it. Um, and get in touch with us. And as we always say, keep, keep those spindles turning. turning.